famous. Say, where's the kingfish been? He been getting down to the lodge hall in the mornings no more. Oh, the kingfish at home. Uh, he and Sapphire listen to a program on the radio there, Happy Harrington. Oh, yeah, radio's happy as couples. Oh, they wouldn't miss that program for the world. They really love it. <laughs> Well, Harriet, I see our time is up once again. I must say goodbye to all our charming friends. That's right, darling. And until tomorrow, this is Harriet. And Harry saying goodbye, goodbye and, and stay, stay happy. <sighs> George, I can't get over how much more pleasant things it's been since we've been listening to the happy Harry. Yeah, it's made a difference around here. Breakfast more pleasant. Yeah, honey, they done something for us. I thought the Harringtons was particularly wonderful this morning. Well, I thought they wasn't as good as usual. I thought they was a whole lot better yesterday morning. Oh, I thought they was so much better today. But then we all entitled to our own opinion. Because I thought Harry was just wonderful. <laughs> just wonderful. Well, as a matter of fact, now that you mentioned it, the uh, boy sort of got on my nerves this morning. He got on your nerves? And just how did he do that? Well, I don't know. Uh, sometimes the boy seemed too happy. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, sometimes he's so happy that I got a sneaking suspicion that they ain't mad at all. <laughs> now, what is it now? You are one person who could certainly learn something from Harry Harrington. He's pleasant and jovial all the time. Sure happy. Setting up there in that penthouse, wearing a $200 suit of coat, sipping coffee out of a golden cup, and wondering what nightclub he's going to later on. George Stevens! What is it now? The Happy Harringtons has showed me something. Married people can be happy. And George Stevens, from now on, me and you is going to be a happy married couple. Do you understand? All right with me. I have always been the one to try to bring a little happiness into the home. What you talking about? If there's any happiness here, I'm the one responsible for it. You brought happiness? Huh. You've been a sourpuss all your life. Don't you call me a sourpuss. I'm always trying to be gay and happy, you old crab. You gay and happy? Why, well, I know fellas in the death house that's gayer than you is. <laughs> I haven't heard enough of this. George Stevens, me and you, me and you is going to have happiness around here if it's the last thing I ever do in my life. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. And you can do the dishes. <laughs> yeah, me. that's what I like about the large hall. Here I have peace and quiet. Here I have comfort. Here I have friends. And here I have relaxation. And here I have the ace of diamonds. That's <laughs> it. No, no, maybe I mean it. You don't know what it's like, boy, being married and trying to find happiness. The two just don't go together. Yeah, I guess you and Sapphire was fighting even before Dempsey and Furpole. <laughs> you ain't had much happiness, did you? No, and I'm afraid I ain't. Now, you something I wouldn't want brooded around. But on our honeymoon, Sapphire and I had our first argument. She laid me out cold with a vase. Knocked you out on your honeymoon? I was unconscious three days. Andy, I hate to say this, but them were the three happiest days of my married life. Well, it's a funny thing. You listen to the radio to people that's happy and you so unhappy. You two is growed up, but she's acting like a couple of children in your infantry. Well, Andy, maybe I've been too touchy. Maybe I've been super sensitive. But after all, just because she liked the Happy Harringtons, ain't no reason why I should go flying off the handle. Andy, I'm gonna give it another chance. I think I found a solution to stop the fight. From here on in, I'm gonna agree with everything she says. Everything. That's the thing to do. No matter what she says, you stay in complete accordion with her. <laughs> well, Harriet, that just about wraps up the program for today. Yes, Harry. And I hope all our dear, dear listeners will be with us again tomorrow because we're going to have a wonderful, wonderful show. And until tomorrow, this is Harry. And Harriet saying goodbye. goodbye.
and, and stay, stay happy. They had a nice program. They certainly did. Uh, they did that. I uh, agree with you 100%. They did that. <laughs> that was a cute little number they'd done together, wasn't it? Cutest little number I ever heard. I agree with you completely. I do that. I do that. <laughs> And it was a cute story, wasn't it, the way they found that little French poodle in Paris? <laughs> the cutest story I ever heard. I agree with you 100%. I do that. I do that. What's the matter with you, George? Ain't you got no mind of your own? Well, I'm only agreeing with you. You could at least express an opinion of your own. Must I tell the whole conversation? Well, now, honey. You sat there and heard the whole program. Ain't you got no opinion, no ideas on it? Well, now that you spoke of it, I think Harriet was a little... That's ridiculous. Honey, I'm only agreeing with you. I don't want you to agree with me. What am I, a child that I have to be humored? Do you think I'm stupid? All right, so you're stupid. The program was the worst mess I ever heard. So, you've never liked the Harrington's, have you? All these mornings, you've been sitting here listening to it and pretending to like it. Now, wait a minute, Sapphire. George Stevens, you've been living a lie. That settles it. You are the most impossible woman that ever lived. Don't you shout at me. I'll shout at who I please. This is my house and a man's home is his castle. Once again, our time is just about up. Yes, and I hope once again we have made your breakfast a little bit happier. And I hope this breakfast has been the same delightful, happy occasion for you as it has been for us. Yes, dear listeners. Every morning we try to make breakfast just a little more enjoyable for all you happy couples everywhere. And until tomorrow, then, this is Harry. And Harriet saying goodbye. goodbye. And, and stay happy. happy. Join us tomorrow when we will once again present the Happy Harringtons. This program was brought to you through the courtesy of... <laughs> oh, Sarah. <laughs> yes, Amos. He actually broke down and cried. No, that's a shame. The saddest thing I ever see, the poor kingfish blubbering all over his poached eggs. <laughs> you know, since they've been listening to the Happy Harringtons, they's worse than ever. Well, I wouldn't blame the program. You know, it's just too bad that Sapphire and the kingfish couldn't be more like the Harringtons. Yeah, well, uh... Yeah, I think it just might work, Sapphire. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe the reason we fight is because I ain't like Harriet. Maybe I could be more happy. Amos, I'm going to try. I really am. Oh, that's nice. Amos, I think you got something there. That's right, Kingfish. If you tried being like Harry, maybe Sapphire is going to turn out to be just like Harriet. Amos, you are a genius. Well, Sapphire started out to pattern herself after Harriet. Yes, Harry and I spent one of our most enjoyable evenings last night. Didn't we, Harry? Oh, indeed, we did. We had an early dinner at the Stork, and then Harriet and I joined a party of our friends for the horse show at the garden. Yes, and coming home, I was positively famished. And we stopped in at the quaintest little place right off Madison. It was simply exquisite. And she really got some good pointers. And the kingfish didn't waste no time to pattern himself after Harry. 
Harry and I were at home last night to a small group of our most intimate friends. Yes, one of the most stimulating evenings we've spent in a long time. Charming friends, delightful conversation. Oh, the conversation fairly sparkled with tidbits about the theater. And we chit-chatted for hours with Colonel Thorndike. He's the one who was on that uh, diplomatic thing, you know. And who has the apartment just perfect. One mass of flowers. Oh. Oh, just a perfect evening, my dear. And the kingfish picked up some pointers, too. Mm, let's see here. Uh, flowers, candy, nightclub, charming friends, compliments, tea, Lawn party, croquette, horseback riding, charming friends. Well, most of that sounds all right. But you got croquettes here. Do eating them make you happy? Oh, and that's croquet. It's a game played with polo ponies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but the thing, uh, with the happy hankins is their social life. They're always talking about uh, being at the opera with Noel and chit-chatting at the theater with Salula. In other words, that's one of the reasons they are happy, because they're always chit-chatting with charming friends. So me and Sapphire are going to start chit-chatting with charming people. <laughs> well, there's only one catch there, Kingfish. You don't know this fellow, Tallulah. <laughs> Where are you going to get these charming and cultured people you is going to chit-chat with? Well, Andy, that's why I'm going to have to cut a few corners. I want you to get a hold of one of them gals of yours, and you and her is going to be my charming circle of friends for the evening. Uh, me get a hold of a gal? That's right, but be sure to write tight. Cultured, charming, and refined. I got just the right gal, Rosemary D. Winters. Good, good. Hello? Uh, may I speak to Miss DeWinters, please? Oh, I see. Uh, well, when she gets off to Mango, will you have her call Mr. Brown? <laughs> People, nice, charming people. We're gonna have a lot of nice chit chat, and everything's gonna be jolly and gay. <laughs> We're gonna have a charming evening, a charming evening. Well, I hope they're nice. After all, that must be our charming friends now. <laughs> well, come in, my charming friend. It's charming to see you. Yeah, charm to see you too, Kingfish, and uh, charm to see you too, Sapphire. Uh, see that Sapphire? The whole mess of us is all charmed up. Good evening, Andy. Uh, Sapphire, may I introduce you up with Miss Rosemary De Winters? Uh, she's going to be my fiance for the evening. <laughs> How do you do, Miss De Winters? Hello, Mrs. Stevens. Well, I'm uh, glad you charming folks got here. Can I take your wrap, Rosemary? Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Rosemary, you better put your wrap back on. You done lost the top of your dress. Oh, Andy, silly. This is the new strapless model that they're wearing now. Yeah, it's mighty pretty, too. Uh, Sapphire can't wear them things on account of a tooth and collarbone. <laughs> she was last year when she lived in the wash tub. George! Uh, I'm trying to make conversation, honey. Just trying to make conversation. Well, we are due at the nightclub at 8. Uh, won't you all have a little snack? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Stevens, I don't like to hurry you, but it is rather late, isn't it? What do you mean? Well, we're going to leave for the club in about five or ten minutes. Don't you think you'd better start getting dressed? Well, I... Dressed? Oh, uh, yes. You don't want to go to a nightclub in that old house coat. <laughs> I am dressed. And if you want to know...
know my opinion. I think I look about four times as attractive as you do. Well, I can't think of no better time than now to start chit-chatting. <laughs> interesting things are uh, like the art, the opera, the museum, and all that kind of stuff. Well, is everybody comfortable? Good. Now for some interesting chit-chat. <laughs> mm, yeah. Are you comfortable there, Rosemary? Yes, I am. Mm, yeah. Are you comfortable in that chair, Sapphire? I have been for 20 years. <laughs> <clears throat> the chit-chat seem to be dragging a little bit, don't it? Uh, ain't nobody been to the opera or the theater lately? Yeah, I was at the theater last night. Oh, the theater, huh? Well, tell us about it. Well, uh, the first thing, uh, Bubbles Levine come out on the runway and then she... <laughs> Well, so much for the theater. I guess we better be getting on. Yeah, let's get going. I've had enough of this chit-chat. I think we've been sitting here long enough. I'll get my coat. <laughs> well, so much for the charming evening. What's the latest between Sapphire and the Kingfish this morning? Well, that picture's back on my wall again. He moved in for good. Kingfish and Sapphire ain't even speaking. Well, this is the worst mess I ever heard of. I guess by now Sapphire and the Kingfish has had enough of the happy herrings. Yeah, the poor Kingfish is desperate. Mm. He went over to Al Gonquin J. Calhoun to see if there ain't some way out of this mess. Well, see you later, Amos. Okay, Andy. Calhoun, I desperate. That's the reason I come to you. I got to get some good sound advice from some intelligent person. Well, now, I'd like to help you, Kingfish, but I don't know nobody like that. No, Calhoun, <laughs> you. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, Kingfish, I don't see no reason why you and your wife have to fight all the time. I don't see no reason why you and Sapphire can't be happy. You don't, huh? No, sir. Let's examine the situation here. After all, you has got a wife who is a beau... Uh, <laughs> you was an intelligent... Uh, she got a personality that... Uh, your character is of such that the... Both of you together is... Uh... Kingfish, you were a lot worse off than I thought you were. <laughs> I desperate. We tried everything. We even tried being like the Happy Harringtons. We done everything they did, and we are fighting worse than ever. Well, now maybe you done it, but maybe you ain't done done it like they done did it. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe them Harringtons done got some secret of happiness that I can't get a grip on. I wonder what they got there. Oh, well, if it's the answer you was after, the thing is simple. Go right to the Harringtons and ask them. Calhoun, I'm going to do it. I'm going to see if I can't get Sapphire to go down to the radio station with me tomorrow morning and talk with the Happy Harringtons. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Look, Sapphire, don't hang up. Please do this for me. Please go with me to see the Happy Harringtons. Well, all right, George. I'll meet you at the broadcasting studio in the morning. I just hope it works out. Oh, thank you, honey. Thank you. I'll meet you there at 8 o'clock in the morning.
Mike, is you sure they'll see us? Oh, yeah, I done called them. They said they would see us in the dressing room before they went on the radio this morning. Well, here goes. George, I hope they can help us. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. They say they're always happy to talk to members of their great radio family. That's what they said. I hope we find out their secret of happiness. Uh, Mr. Harrington? Yes? And what can I do for you two lovely, lovely people? Well, uh, we as Mr. and Mrs. Stevens. We called about uh, talking to you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, please do come in. <laughs> There we are. And I would like you to meet my charming wife. Oh, Harriet, dear, these two lovely people are the Stevenses. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Stevens. So nice of you to call. How do you do? Yeah, how do you do there? <laughs> oh, won't you sit down? So, oh, Mrs. Stevens, you sit right here, please. Darling, you sit right there. And, uh, Mrs. Stevens, if you please. Thank you. Now then, and, uh, now, what can we do for you? Come now, Harriet and I are always ready to help members of our great radio family. Aren't we, Harriet, darling? That's right, Harry, sweetheart. <laughs> well, the thing in a nutshell is, uh, well, me and my wife would like to know where you all get all this happiness from. <laughs> <laughs> yes, could you just tell us something that would make us as happy as you? Well, maybe we could. You see, we feel that cooperation and understanding are the keynotes to a happy marriage. You see, Mrs. Stevens, years ago, when I got the idea for this radio program and sold it to the network... Oh, Harry, dear. Yes, Harriet, darling? You said you got the idea. <laughs> if you remember, darling, the idea for the program was mine. Oh, yes. Yes, that's right, sweetheart. Well, what I meant to say was when I took the program and sold it to the network... Oh, Angel. Yes, dear. Both of us took the program to the network. But, honey, if you'll remember, I was the one who did the talking. <laughs> but, Lamb, I was the one who told you what to say. Oh, dear, I don't like to disagree with you, but the truth of the matter is, it was my idea from the start. Your idea? You never had an idea in your life. Ha, ha, ha. Don't you laugh at me, Miss Big Mouth. Don't you call me Miss Big Mouth, you smirking old. How dare you call me smirking old? Head. Oh, I've a good mind to... You lay a finger on me and I'll flatten that pinhead of yours. Excuse me, please. But would you all mind stopping to fight long enough to tell us where you get all this happiness from? You keep out of this. Now, who's calling to pinhead? Oh, I've a good mind to wring that scrawny neck of yours. I'll fix you. Let me get my hand on you. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is station KTIX, welcoming you once again to the happiest half hour in radio. However, due to an unforeseen accident, we regret that the happy Harringtons will not be with us this morning. But the show must go on, and fortunately, we are about to rush in a last minute substitution. And here they are, the happy Stevenses. Good morning, darling. Good morning, sweetheart. Happy, happy, happy. And now for some interesting chit chat. <laughs>
Show. Hello, folks. This is Amos. You know, when the kingfish was a boy back home, every time a baby was christened in the family, his rich uncle Clarence was there for the occasion. And he took the little children into his arms and blessed them. And every time a baby was born in the family, Uncle Clarence gave the parents a check for $500. And that $500 check always made an impression on the little kingfish. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir, in his boyhood, the kingfish attended a lot of family Christmas. And the little kingfish wasn't missing nothing, either. And Joyce, my boy, when you get married and have children, there'll always be a $500 check for you, too. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the years has rolled by since then. And the kingfish has come a long way. But just the other day, a letter come from that small town. A letter from Uncle Clara. Well, that's your taxi, honey. You ain't got but 45 minutes till train time. No, George. It's a special delivery letter from your Uncle Clarence back home. Oh. He's arriving in New York the day after tomorrow. <laughs> George, would you be more careful? You say Uncle Clarence is arriving in New York tomorrow? Yes, George. He says it's his first trip up here in 15 years. He's going to have a few minutes between business appointments. He wants to drop up and see us. It's a shame I'm going to have to miss him. What with me and Mama going out to Chicago to visit Opal Lesson. Yeah, too bad you ain't going to be here at a time like this, ain't it? But, George, there's something I don't understand in his letter. He says he's very anxious to see both of us and the little one. What does he mean, the little one? Well, uh, uh, well, uh, the last time I wrote him, uh, I think your Mama was staying with us. Now, George, don't tell me that you referred to Mama as the little one in your letter. Well, uh, I'll tell you, that was before she uh, over it and uh, blowed up like a hippopotamus. <laughs> uh, you better get your bags ready. George, ain't this the Uncle Clarence that always gives a member of your family $500 when they has a baby? Well, uh, I think I recall something about that. George Stevens, did you by any chance write your uncle that we had a baby so you could get $500? Me? Why, Sapphire, how could you ever suspect I'd do a thing like that? I'll tell you, honey. Uh, sound like your taxi, honey. Now, have a good time and don't worry about nothing. Be sure you're right. Goodbye. Goodbye. George, that letter from your uncle has got me upset. Is you sure you didn't write him we had a baby? Honey, how could you say anything like that? Do you think I'd do anything that underhanded to my own dear uncle? Why, Sapphire. Well, George, I guess even you wouldn't do a thing like that. <laughs> Let me see, did I write Uncle Clarence? It was a boy or a girl. <laughs> Kingfish, you mean to say that you done sent your uncle a wire saying that you and Sapphire done had a baby? Yeah, indeed, that was two years ago. I was desperate. I had my back up against the wall, and I needed 500 bucks, so I rid him. Yeah, that's a big step. 
But, Kingfish, didn't you know that sooner or later that your Uncle Clarence was going to catch up on you? Yeah, but Andy, when I read him, he had double pneumonia. And I figured that would be my last chance to wing him. But the old boy double-crossed me. He got well. <laughs> oh, he did, huh? Yeah, and then if ever I meet that guy that invented penicillin, I'm gonna punch him right in the nose. <laughs> yeah, but what you gonna tell your uncle when he wants to start playing patty cake with your little offshoot? Well, I tell you, Andy, when I meet him at the train, I'm gonna tell him that the whole thing was a joke. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna pat him on the back and tell him it was all in fun. Oh, Andy, he'll get a big kick out of it. Why, he gonna laugh, he, uh... He, uh... <laughs> Kingfish, something tells me that them ha-ha's ain't gonna be as jovial as you think they're gonna be. Yeah, I tell you, Andy, Uncle Clarence never was noted for his sense of humor. I remember one time at Thanksgiving dinner, we thought that he was chuckling at one of the jokes. But it turned out later that he had a wishbone stuck in his throat. Oh, Andy, if he ever find out what I done to him, he gonna cut me out of his will. Yeah, that's a painful piece of surgery, all right. Uh, hey, Kingfish, uh, maybe you could send your uncle a wire saying that you was out of town and didn't get his letter. Oh, no, Andy. Uncle Cramp, too wise old boy to fall for a story like that. And I ain't taking no chance on the court of sitting myself out of his will. Yeah, but what can you do, Kingfish? You is a dead duck. Or even your wife is out of town. Hmm, Andy. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but by 10 o'clock tomorrow, I'm not only going to have a wife, I'm going to have a baby. Holy mackerel, you sure going to have a busy 24 hours. <laughs> we'll return to Amos and Andy in just a moment. Mmm, black. For me. Blatt's for me. Blatt's for me. Blatt's beer is sweeping the country. First in Milwaukee, cause it's first in taste. Blatt's for me. Blatt's for me. Wherever you go, folks are saying... Blatt's for me. You hear it in Milwaukee, where Blatt's is the largest selling beer. They're toasting it everywhere, because Blatt's is first in taste. With folks like these, the light, distinctive flavor of Blatt's is so pleasing, their regular order has become Blatt's for me. Yes, with millions of people like these, Blatt's is first choice because it's first in taste. So good that after one bottle, folks agree... Blatt's for me. Try this wonderful Blatt's beer yourself, and you'll agree. D-L-A-T-Z. Hey, hey, Andy. Oh, hi, Amos. You have to excuse me. I'm in a hurry. Oh, where are you going, son? Uh, I, I'm going over to see Carlotta Montgomery. Oh, yeah, your new girlfriend. She's a cute little girl, all right. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to take her over to the Kingfish. Uh, you taking her to the Kingfish? Yeah, you got to have a wife by 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm uh, glad you got in town all right, Uncle Clarence. Uh, what time will we expect you? Well, George, I'll be up to your place around 10 o'clock. But I won't have much time to spend with you and your family. I'm just loaded down with business appointments. Well, we'll expect you, Uncle Clarence. Uh, as a matter of fact, i rounding up my family right now. Goodbye. Hey, 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 Andy, wait a minute. I want to talk to you. Listen, when I seen you about a half hour ago, you said something didn't make too much sense. Listen, Amos, I don't have time to talk to you. I got to go over and talk to Mrs. Thorndike. You got to talk to Mrs. Thorndike? Yeah, the kingfish got to have a two-year-old baby by 10 o'clock. <laughs> well, there he is, kingfish. One wife and one baby. How do you do there? Well, the baby looks bright and happy. I ain't worried about him playing his part. Yeah, and Kingfish, this is my girlfriend, Carlotta Montgomery. Oh, Mr. Steven. <laughs> Andy, I think we're in trouble here. <laughs> and me and Uncle Clarence will be by any minute now, so I think you better get lost. 
He's dropping by in between business appointments. Now give me a half an hour with Carlotta and the baby, and I think I'll be able to get rid of him by then. Yeah, well, you better, because I done told Mrs. Thorndike I'd have the baby back by noontime. Well, goodbye for a while, my little turtle dove. <laughs> and goodbye for a while, my great big apple dumpling. <laughs> <laughs> Carlotta? Carlotta! Holy mackerel. And just to think, she is the mother of my child. Carlotta! Uncle Clarence will be here any minute now. Now, these are your instructions. You are my wife. Your name is Sapphire, and this is our little baby. I'm your wife, Sapphire, and this is our baby. Fine, fine, fine. And Carlotta, I want... There's Uncle Clarence now, and for heaven's sake, don't mess nothing up. Well, 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 my favorite Uncle Clarence. It's good to see you, Uncle Clarence. It's good to see you. You don't know how I've looked forward to this. It's good to see you too, George. And it's nice to see that you're in good health. Never felt better in my life. Wait, please. I'll only be a few minutes. Now I want you to come over and meet your family. Well, well, I suppose this charming girl is your wife, Sapphire. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Sapphire, dear, mother of my child, sitting in the buggy here. This is Uncle Clarence that you would heard so much about. How do you do, Uncle Clarence? I'm so glad to meet you. Any uncle of George's is an uncle of mine. I've looked forward to meeting you for a long time. I had no idea you were this young, though. <laughs> and this our little baby. Well, well. You know, Sapphire, George didn't tell me whether the baby was a boy or a girl. Come to think of it, George, you never told me either. Well, George, I can see you married a woman with a sense of humor. Yeah, great little kidder. <laughs> uh, Uncle Clarence, it's a boy. Well, well, well. Tell me, sweetheart, whose little baby are you? Don't answer that. Isn't he cute? Well, do something. What can I do? I don't like to interfere, George, but I'd say this baby's hungry. Oh, uh, yeah. Go in the apartment and get the baby something to eat. All right, George. Oh, but George, which one is our apartment? Your wife don't know which apartment you live in? Uh, Uncle Clarence, would you step over here a minute? What is it, George? Uh, Uncle Clarence, I think you done rediscovered the one flaw in my sweet little wife's personality. She's stupid as a mule. Stupid? But she has such a clever little baby. Well, the old law of the jungle, the theory of evolution. The offspring always spring higher than what is sprung off of. But the important thing is, she seems to be a good mother and devoted to the baby. Oh, a wonderful girl, a wonderful girl. Must you be running, Uncle dear? Well, I wish I could spend more time, but I have a business appointment at 11.30. Now, ain't that a shame? George, I'm happy to see you have such a wonderful family. To me, the family is the backbone of our country. Too many of our younger, modern people of today take the responsibility of raising a family very lightly. I'm happy to see you are not one of those. Oh, no, Uncle Clarence, we are serious, yeah. But it's wonderful to see you again, Uncle Clarence. Wonderful. Sapphire. Sapphire. Sapphire, hey, you by the buggy there. You want me? Uh, yeah, say goodbye to Uncle Clarence. Bye-bye, Uncle Clarence. Goodbye, Sapphire. You feed that baby now. Well, goodbye, George. And I just want to say one thing before I go. Seeing your little family is certainly going to make a difference in my will. A difference you'll be very happy about. But I'd better hurry. I don't want to miss my appointment. Well, goodbye, Uncle Clarence, and uh, have a good trip back home. And don't forget to let us hear from you or your lawyer real soon. <laughs> All right, Carlotta, you and the kid can blow now. The show is over. 
I'm very sorry, sir. Mr. Williams was called out of town unexpectedly. Well, that's too bad. But it's just as well. I can now go back and spend a little time with my little nephew before my train leaves. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, honey, uh, we'll get the baby back to Mrs. Thorndike, and then maybe you and me can go for a little walk for ourselves. Eh? Taxi? I don't think so, young man. How far is it to Lenox Avenue? Well, it's about six blocks. It's a little short if you cut through the park. Thanks very much. The walk will do me good. Yeah. You is just about the cutest little turtle dove in the world. And you're just about the sweetest little apple dumpling in the world. <laughs> oh, honey, I was just crazy about you. And I'm just crazy about you, too. <laughs> yeah, and... Mister, will you please go away? We ain't giving no preformers here, you know. Sapphire, what is the meaning of this? Uncle Clarence! Uncle Clarence? And I thought you were the perfect mother, and now I catch you with this, this, this man. Uh, but you don't understand. Understand? Huh. We may not be onto your city ways back home, but this is one thing we understand all over the world. Oh, me. <laughs> we'll return to Amos and Andy in just a moment. in Milwaukee, where Blatt's is the largest selling beer. And now, folks from coast to coast agree. Way down in Tallahassee, we all say Blatt's for me. After the most extensive research, it's that magnificent Blatt's for me. And wonderful, wonderful Blatt's for me, too. Mmm, -hmm. what a flavor. Yes, Blatt's is a favorite wherever you go. I'm from Milwaukee, and I ought to know. It's the Blatt's Beer Story wherever you go. Blatt's is the name you will always hear. Blatt's is Milwaukee's finest beer. And that's the story, Calhoun, just as it happened. I see. You told your uncle that you had a baby so that you could get $500. Uh, that's right. And then you introduced this gal, Carlotta, to your uncle as your wife, Sapphire. Yeah, Calhoun, and that's when the trouble started. Uncle Clarence was walking through the park, and there on a bench right before his very eyes was Carlotta with her arms around Andy, just sitting there smooshing with the boy like mad. Mm. 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 Any more questions, Calhoun? Yes, there is. What did this gal call out his telephone number? Oh, well, I tell you, he's leaving on the 515, and if I don't think of something fast, he's gonna cut me out of his will for sure. Now, calm down, Kingfish, calm down. Remember, no matter how messy a mess you was messed up in, there's always a way to unmess yourself. Let's put our thinking caps on again. Think our way out of this thing. Uh, that's right, Uncle Clance. As you come up this evening, I'll explain everything. Well, all right, George. I've postponed my reservations. I don't want to condemn anyone unjustly. But, George, I won't tolerate any nonsense. I told you I have no use for people who don't respect their marital vows. Oh, thank you, Uncle Clarence. Thank you. Then I'll see you tonight about 7. Hey, where are you going in such a hurry, son? Come in. I'm in a hurry, Amos. I'm going over to see Carlotta Montgomery. You're going over to see Carlotta? Yeah. And then I'm going over to see Mrs. Thorndike. Uh, you is, huh? Yeah. At 7 o'clock at night, the kingfish is going to have a baby again. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the whole story, Uncle Clarence. Mr. Brown here is my dear wife's brother. Ain't that right, brother-in-law, dear? Uh, that's right, Uncle Clarence. Me and Sapphire here is brother and sister. But George, in the park, 
Oh, well, the whole family happened to be very close. Uh, a very affectionate family. Why, the sweetest people you could meet any place. George, you don't have any ulterior motive for telling me a story like this, do you? Oh, no, Uncle Clarence. Why would I want to do anything like that? This is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I give you my sacred word of honor. You keep out of this and eat your bathroom. Well, Uncle Clarence, you got two more hours till train time. And we done cooked a wonderful dinner for you. Uh, Sapphire, get the steaks. And when it comes to steaks... Excuse us. Hello? Hello, George. This is Sapphire. Oh, it's you. Uh, business call. Well, how's everything out in Chicago? I ain't in Chicago. I'm here in New York. What? Yes, Opalescent is feeling much better, so I left Mama out there and come on home. I'm here in the station now. I'll be up there just as soon as I can get a subway. I'll be there in about 20 minutes. Uh, a little trouble on that business deal we in, Mr. Brown. Uh, business deal? Yeah, that shipment we sent out to Chicago two days ago is back at the depot. Uh, Kingfish, uh, this shipment you is talking about, uh, is that the old crate that uh, we usually have so much trouble with? Well, I see we all finished with our grapefruit here. Uh, nice day, isn't it, Uncle Clarence? Yes. Yes. Will you have room for dessert, Uncle Clarence? Uh, uh, nice day, ain't it, Uncle Clarence? Yes. I've never seen an eating pass this fast before. Thank you. 
Taxi, taxi. You all don't need to come to the station with me. Now, Uncle Clarence. No, we'll say our goodbyes right here. Goodbye, Andy. Goodbye, Sapphire. Bye. And goodbye to you, too, you sweet little baby. And goodbye, George. I'm happy to see you are one man who takes his marriage seriously. A man who is devoted to his family. Break it up, break it up, beat it, beat it. Get away from you, all of you. George Stevens, what's going on here? What's all these dishes doing out? What kind of wild party did you have it? Ain't no wild party, honey. My Uncle Clarence was in town. I just entertained him, that's all. Well, you must have had some party. And who was eating problem? Oh, uh, listen, honey, let's forget the dishes. This your first night home. We'll do them in the morning. All right, George. Honey, I got some great news for us. <laughs> yeah, Uncle Clarence really going to remember us in his will. Oh, that's wonderful, George. And another thing, honey, it's good having you back. I really have missed you. Oh, it's good to be back home, too, George. Hey, yeah, honey, you ain't got no idea. George, your clock must have... Boys, this is the last straw. Who is this strange woman? Oh, no, and no, don't no. try to tell me she's your sister.